Want to make your guests feel like they just stepped into a Pottery Barn catalog? I have nine tips to help you design your home like a showroom. When you're just starting out in a new home, it can be overwhelming to decorate and furnish the whole house, right? I was on a serious budget when I first started decorating my own home. So let me put out this very important disclaimer. I'm not telling you to go out and spend thousands of dollars at Pottery Barn, but I have done lots of research on how that company stages its showrooms and pictures in its catalog. So this video is nothing but tips on how to display, organize, and complement the furnishings you already have, and maybe give you a little inspiration if you're looking to redecorate. Now you will see a couple of Pottery Barn pieces in this video, but most of my own furnishings I have either bought on a budget, I actually made myself, or I reclaimed at no cost. If you are into that modern farmhouse style and you want to see more plus DIY projects to create your own decor, go ahead and click that subscribe button and also ring the bell to get notified when new videos go up. So just a heads up, since there are nine tips in this video, I do have a downloadable version of this tip sheet for you. It's in the description below that you can grab and that way you don't have to take notes during the video. Okay, let's get into the nine tips to decorate like a Pottery Barn catalog. Tip number one, cluster in odd numbers. It's inherently pleasing to the eye when you group things in odd numbers. So by themselves, in groups of three, in groups of five, you get the idea. An example of this is my ladder bookcase. Everything on every shelf is set up in threes in this example, but you can go with differing variety. You also want a good mix of materials, and you see that represented here on this ladder bookcase, right? We've got wood, there's a photo, there are candles, botanicals, glass, metal, lots of variety. Up on the top shelf, I have these little decorative wood blocks too. I originally designed these for Valentine's Day, but they work as appropriate decor pretty much all year long because they are so subtle. And if you wanna learn how to make those decorative wood blocks, I will link that video up here and also down below so you can check out that tutorial. Tip number two, everything in its place. So you want to get organized. Someone once said, no one is naturally messy, they're just not organized. So you wanna make use of baskets and bins and any other kind of unique ways that you can store stuff. A classic farmhouse example would be mason jars or apothecary jars. And then you can label everything for an added touch. And I have examples of this in my own organization. So for example, in my mud room, I've organized two separate crates for my girls. I keep things like their rain boots, their mittens, their hats, their backpacks, their folders for school, all of those kinds of things all tucked away in one relatively large bin that can just slide under the mudroom storage unit. And another example of this, keeping with the theme of children's organization, since my girls are only three years old, they're not organizing much by themselves just yet, so I have to do it for them. And I do that with their clothing. So I work a very early morning schedule in my full-time gig as an on-air meteorologist. So I always put the girls' clothing out the night before so it's easier on my husband the next morning. And I have two separate baskets on top of their dresser in their closet, each one labeled with each girl's name, and inside is their entire outfit for the next day. The other thing I organize is all of their accessories for when they come out of the bathtub. So their lotions, their brush, their tissues, all of that stuff goes on a lazy Susan. So it's taking something that's labeled perhaps to be strictly in the kitchen and utilizing it elsewhere where I can actually make a ton of use out of it. A sub tip to this is to avoid clutter. It's it's one thing to just try to get yourself organized. It's another to just avoid having too much stuff out because too much stuff is just too much. So of course you want to accessorize, but all the while keep space open so that you can live in it. A perfect example of this is my sofa table. Since it is right next to the sofa, a lot of times we put our drinks back on that table as we're sitting on the couch or we put the remote back on that table. So I need to have that space open for us to use it and to live in that area. So I have a good portion of that table decorated, but also a nice large section that's just set open so that I can place things there. Tip number three, 
weathered, rustic, and natural pieces are your friends. And I think just the word farmhouse kind of invokes this sense of hard work, of pieces that have seen a lot over the years. They've been passed down from generation to generation. So I'm lucky enough to have in-laws who actually live in a real farmhouse, and it's been in the family for over a hundred years. And they have this barn that's full of old stuff from my husband's grandmother's house. We went rummaging up there several times now and reclaimed a bunch of old gorgeous heirloom pieces that were just collecting dust and dirt ordinary kitchen items that would have been used in an early era farmhouse so things like a glass churn an actual can of prince albert tobacco you guys know that whole joke about prince albert in a can so here's a perfect example of doing all of this on a budget. Pottery Barn sells this vintage olive bucket, that's what the product name is, for, any guesses? $99. Oh, I can't. I know not everyone's gonna have a farmhouse where you can go and rummage in a barn that's full of all of these wonderful gems. I consider myself incredibly lucky to have had that chance. However, there are a lot of inexpensive ways that you can still create this kind of look in your home for much, much less money than $99 for a bucket. Think of thrift shops, Kirkland's, Target has a great home shop. Joanne Fabrics actually has a nice little decor section. So does Michael's. Lakeside Collection. And then there's a fantastic website called saveoncrafts.com that also has some really great ideas. Home goods would be another one that, of course, I gotta get in there. Make a note in the comment below if you've got another great website or another great store that you find pieces like this that aren't terribly expensive. So one of my favorite examples is in our mudroom. I set up a gallery wall of nothing but old vintage photographs, pictures of my husband's grandmother's graduation from teaching school. I love this picture, but it actually has history tied to our family. A picture of his grandmother as a baby, a picture of his father graduating from high school. I put every picture in a different frame to give it lots of texture and variety. Oddly, the mudroom was one of the first rooms I decorated because I had these amazing photographs and I had to get them up on the wall as fast as I could. Tip number four, neutrals are number one. Now this rule applies to main pieces and big furniture, anything that's gonna take up the most room in your space. And think about it, the core of Pottery Barn's inventory is totally neutral. If you look through the pages in their different shops, their couches, their tables, even their accent chairs by and large are very neutral in color. And it's also a very smart tactic to use neutrals for these large pieces, specifically when it comes to seasonal decor. Think about it. You decorate by trading out different pillows, different blankets, different pieces that go on your mantle, different pieces that go on your shelves and your bookcases and, and whatever else. Those different pops of color are always changing with the different seasons, right? But you're not gonna change out your entire sofa nor your dining table just because it's Christmas time, right? So it really makes a lot of sense from a seasonal decor aspect as well that having, say, a gray sofa is always going to go well with the reds of Christmas, with the oranges and the yellows of fall, with the robin's egg blue that comes with springtime and Easter and everything else. So you have that basic neutral piece that will absolutely go with everything that you pair with it down the road. Tip number five, complement with color and metallics. So I think it's pretty obvious that splashes and pops of color will make a room look a lot brighter and more cheery, but when you have too much color in one space, it can be really overwhelming. So if you're trying to decorate like a Pottery Barn catalog, you need to use color judiciously. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for a bright red couch, if that is your thing. In fact, I have a Tiffany Blue Chaise Lounge that is currently in my front guest room that I got not so much on a whim. I actually researched that quite a bit before I purchased it and I loved it. So I got it. Does it go with anything else right now, however? Absolutely not, which is a shame. But at the time, I was so in love with it, so I got it. And that's to say, of course, 
if you are absolutely in love with a bright piece and you know you're going to be in love with it forever, by all means, purchase it. Just know that it may not always go with your taste in any given room down the road. That's absolutely how it worked out for me. So again, specific to the modern farmhouse style slash pottery barn design look, you want to bail on the really bright colors for main pieces. Now there is a little bit of gray area with this one, specifically when it comes to chairs. Armchairs kind of fall in the middle, in my opinion. They're not a main piece, but they're not really small decor either. So you do you. I have a couple of chairs that are serious pops of color. I've got royal purple chairs in my dining room as well as a golden yellow love seat. And I also have a navy blue armchair in my reading room. Those kinds of pieces can be like the one really nice splash that the room needs to make it just bright enough. So that's why I feel like chairs can sort of fall in between, but that again is your call. Number six, monogram it. Pottery Barn actually has a shop dedicated to monogramming. So this is one of the big ones that you don't skip if you are trying to mimic a Pottery Barn look. And it's one of those really nice, obvious custom flares that you can add to your own decor. I only do a couple of pieces like this. I think all together in our entire home, there are three places that our initial shows up. One is a doormat and the other is a reclaimed corrugated piece of metal that was cut into the shape of an end. Tip number seven, mix textures, materials, and patterns. You have heard me talk about my work in progress reading room, probably ad nauseum at this point. And I just uploaded a video on the main centerpiece of this room. It's a giant Ikea bookcase that I refurbished and I will link that tutorial up here. But in this room, I am trying to follow this rule. Lots of textures, mixed materials, and patterns. So an example of this, a leather chair, faces into the reading room. It's got a flannel buffalo check blanket and a burlap pillow with a mustache print. There are other examples of this too. In my dining room, the chairs are set up so that instead of six matching chairs around the table, they're completely mixed up. At the heads of the table, I have a royal purple velvet chair on each end with a very intricate back pattern. By the way, these are really comfortable chairs. I got them at Pier 1. Oh, they're so cozy. And then I've got a yellow love seat on one side. Now this is against the wall so as to keep the room feeling nice and open. And on the opposite side, I have two wooden chairs. So this is a total mix of all of those things, texture, material, and pattern. Tip number eight, design with intention. You wanna think about how you'll use these pieces and also the open space that you're leaving behind once you've decorated. So when I designed my daughter's nursery a couple of years ago, I made absolutely sure to include a big rocking chair where we could snuggle with bedtime stories and cuddle under a super soft blanket because I had the intention, even a few years ago, that once they were born, I wanted to instill a love of reading in them. So again, think about how you're going to use these spaces that you've opened up and also the pieces that you're placing and what you're actually going to use them for so that you can decorate with some sort of real intention behind it. And that way you'll actually use those areas. And finally, tip number nine, experiment with form and function. Okay, just because a piece of furniture is labeled as media storage shelves does not mean you cannot repurpose it. Ignore labels. You wanna find furniture that suits your household needs. So a bar stool could become a plant stand. A short bookcase could be turned into a changing table. I use these examples from actual experience. Uh, so there are lots of ways that you can repurpose furniture that's designated in a catalog for one thing in a way that's going to make way more sense for you. My hutch is the biggest example of this in my home. A hutch, as you probably know, is designed to typically hold things like fine china or dining accessories, but my hutch holds nothing but toys. So with twin three-year-olds, you're going to accumulate a lot of stuff. So that's why we purchased this piece. It is actually a Pottery Barn hutch, but it has come in so incredibly handy. Not only is it fantastic storage space, but because there are all these drawers that are close to the ground, the girls 
can still find stuff within arm's reach and they don't need us to go grab everything off of a high shelf for them anymore. So we don't have to feel like we're hiding their stuff away, putting it up in a closet in a room that's far away from where they're actually going to use their toys. It can be right out there basically in plain sight, and they can also grab for all of that stuff. And hey, let me know in the comments too, if you're interested in seeing the ways in which we organize our girls' toys. The hutch is far from the only place that we put their toys and store them away. So if you're interested in how we're still able to maintain a house that still looks like adults live there, even with twin toddlers running around, let me know. I would love to share those ideas and tips with you. So all of these rules complement and work with one another. And if you look closely, you can see the different tips overlapping one another in the different examples that I showed you, right? My sofa table combines tip numbers one, two, three, five, and seven. Everything's placed in odd numbers, a cluster of three decor pieces on the top left, one on the right, and three across the shelf below. There is an organizational element here since I use this space as my library book storage spot. And then I also incorporated the weathered candle holder and the wooden planter box to meet rule number three. I complemented with a little color and the flowers and metallics in the Moscow Mule Mug and the Joy sign on the bottom shelf. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Remember, you can grab the download of the tip sheet below. It's got everything you need in one place and that makes it a lot easier so you don't have to go back and rewatch this video because I know your time is precious and I definitely respect that. But just click the link below to access that. Decorating can be an overwhelming task, especially when you're just moving into a starter home or you don't have a lot to spend. So I hope this gave you some ideas and I would love to know your top design tips. So just one more question for you. What is your number one design tip? Share it in the comments below so that everyone who is watching can all get that added bonus. I would love to hear it as well. Meantime, give this video a like if you are all about the Pottery Barn style of decorating and also make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell so that you can get notified when new videos are uploaded. I post every single Thursday and I am on all the social platforms. So if you wanna get in touch in between uploads, I would love to hear from you and I will link all of those below as well. Thank you again for watching. Good luck creating your happy place with these tips and I will see you soon. I have nine tips. Nine, that's nine. Ah. And if you wanna see the tutorial on how I made those decorative wood blocks, <laughs> weathered, rustic, and what was the third one? Tip number seven, mix material, mix ma does not mean you have to you, you, you and ring the bell so that you can get a notified, get a notified. Three, two kitchen items that would have been used in an early era. Give me.